Hello everyone. Welcome to week four of the Healthy Aging Support Program. Let's get started. Let's do a quick review of last week's activities for diet and nutrition. We learned how to use the MyPlate method to help you make better food decisions, read a nutrition facts label to understand how food may impact your health, simplify your eating habits by stocking your cupboards and fridge with healthy foods, retain food nutrients to keep vitamins and minerals in your food when you cook it, improve recipes to make your favorite foods healthier. This week's topic is about understanding the medicines you may take. When you have a chronic condition, it's likely you take at least one type of medicine. If you have more than one condition, you may take several medicines, possibly at different times each day. We'll be talking about the information that's printed on a prescription bottle label later, and it might help you to follow along if you have your own label in front of you. Here are the topics we will cover today. How to take your medicine as prescribed. Side effects and what you might do about them. How to keep your medicines organized and safe. The information on your prescription label. Please note that drug, meds, medication, and medicine are interchangeable terms. For consistency, I will mostly use the term medicines throughout the session. And this week, I'll probably refer to your prescribing doctors a lot. But that may include a nurse practitioner, and I certainly don't mean to discount those key professionals. But for simplicity, I may occasionally use the term doctor or prescribing doctor, and that will refer to anyone who is licensed to prescribe medicines to you. Let's begin our discussion with your understanding of the role your medicines play in managing your condition. Your doctor should explain why you need a certain medicine at the time it's prescribed. To be sure you understand your medicine, you can. Take notes during your doctor visit. Your notes can help you remember and understand what was said. Repeat back what you heard when it's first explained to you. That way your doctor can correct any misunderstandings right away. Ask a nurse or pharmacist to help you understand if the information given to you is not clear. Your medicine cabinet may include a combination of prescription and over-the-counter medicines. Prescription medicines legally require a medical prescription from your healthcare provider. Most doctors can send the prescription electronically to your pharmacy, so you don't need to handle paper anymore. Over-the-counter OTC medicines do not require a prescription. You can buy them at grocery stores, convenience stores, and supermarkets, as well as the pharmacy. OTC medicines treat conditions that are easy to self-diagnose, like headaches, colds, and allergies. Or your doctor may recommend something based on your condition, such as a low-dose aspirin a day. These OTC medicines are not as potent as prescription medicines and are less likely to be misused or abused, but it can happen. Be sure to always follow the guidelines listed on the box or bottle and call your doctor if you have any questions. Each medicine has at least two different names the generic name, and one or more brand names. The generic name is the standard chemical name of the medicine. For example, acetaminophen is a generic medicine. More than one company can make and sell acetaminophen, but that generic name will always be the same. The brand name is the name under which a specific manufacturer markets a product. For example, Tylenol is a brand that sells acetaminophen. The brand name will be different for each company. Ask your doctor or pharmacist if your medicine is a generic or brand. If it's a brand, ask what the generic equivalent is so you'll know in case a second doctor, such as an emergency room doctor, prescribes a similar medicine. The main difference between generic and brand name medications is the name and appearance. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, requires generic medicines to have the same active ingredients, strength, dosage, form, and route of administration as the brand name medicine. Generic versions of most brand name medicines are available and allow you to save money year after year. Your doctor or pharmacist can tell if the medicine you're taking is generic or if it's a brand. Always check with your doctor or pharmacist to understand your options. There are examples of brand versus generic. For diabetes, metformin is the same as glucophage. For COPD asthma, albuterol is the same as Ventolin. For OTC, Advil and Motrin is the same as ibuprofen. Be aware of combination medicines such as Tylenol PM, which may contain multiple ingredients, such as a pain reliever with a sleep aid. This medicine contains both acetaminophen and diphenhydramine, Benadryl. If you are just looking for a pain reliever, this would not be the best option because it will also make you sleepy. It's important to take your medicine only as prescribed. That means, fill the prescription at a pharmacy right away, take exactly the right amount as shown on the label, take it at the appropriate and same time each day. Your doctor chooses a medicine, dosage, and frequency to give you the most help to control your condition. Each medicine is different. 
Some work better if taken in the morning, and some work better when taken at bedtime. In fact, drugs often must be used at the same times every day to be the most effective. For example, if you take your medicine at 9 a.m. the first day, you should take it at around 9 a.m. every day. Take with or without food as indicated by the manufacturer of the medicine. And be sure to refill the prescription when you run low. You should know how many refills are written on your prescription and refill before you run out of medicine. Your prescriber or your pharmacist can help if you have any questions about how, when, and why to take your medicines, including what to do if you miss a dose or took your medicine incorrectly. Here are some questions to ask your doctor before you leave the office. How long should I take the medicine? Should I take it with water, food, or with a special medicine, or at the same time as other medicines? Should I take it before, during, or after meals? Can I take it with over-the-counter medicines? If so, when? What should I do if I miss or forget a dose? What foods, drinks, other medicines, dietary supplements, or activities should I avoid while taking this medicine? You may also want to ask questions more specific to your prescription. Do I need to evenly spread out the doses? For example, if the instructions say four times a day, does that mean I have to take it in the middle of the night? What do you mean by as needed? Are there any special instructions to follow? Can I use the prescribed inhaler for any breathing problems? Are there any alternatives if I have trouble swallowing tablets? May I crush or break the tablets? Does this come in liquid form? Here are some ideas to help you remember to take your medicines. Put them where you'll see them every day, like next to or inside your favorite tea or coffee mug. But keep safety in mind if any children live in your home. Use a pillbox with separate spaces for each day, multiple times a day, if appropriate. Look for the size and shape that best fits your pill regimen, lifestyle, or purse. Set a cell phone or watch alarm to remind you when to take your medicine. Plan ahead for food and timing requirements so you can take your meds at breakfast, after exercising, bedtime, or any other activity you do at the same time every day. Sync up with another person close to you, like your spouse, family member, or friend who also takes daily medicines. You can help to remind each other when your schedules coincide. All medicines, including prescription, over-the-counter, OTC, and herbal supplements can have side effects. Side effects are unwanted or unexpected events or reactions to a medicine. Side effects can be minor, like a runny nose, or they can be life-threatening, such as an increased risk of a heart attack. To learn more about side effects, you can ask your healthcare professional about any possible side effects and what, if any, steps you should take to reduce the risk if you are prescribed a medicine. For example, he or she may recommend taking the medicine with food to lower the chance of getting nauseous. Ask your pharmacist for the patient prescribing information when you receive your prescription. This document will include possible common and serious side effects. Read the label and any stickers that the pharmacist attached to the prescription bottle. The label and stickers have information on how to take the medicine and will warn you about any possible side effects. Even if your doctor gives you a long list of possible side effects, it doesn't mean you'll experience all of them. Each patient is different. Your pharmacist is a part of your clinical care team, and he or she can tell you which side effects are common, which are less common, and which are rare. Your age, gender, allergies, how your body absorbs the medicine, and even other medicines, vitamins, or supplements you take can affect whether you'll have side effects or the severity of them. What can you do? Keep track of side effects to help your doctor know how your body is responding to a medicine. New symptoms or mood changes may not be the result of getting older, but could be from the medicine you're taking or some other reason, like a change in diet or routine. Tell your doctor if you have memory problems after starting a medicine. Your doctor may need to adjust the dose or stop the medicine. If you have an unwanted side effect, call your doctor right away. A nurse or pharmacist can also help you work through side effects. Or your doctor may adjust your dose or switch to another medicine. Or recommend a change in your diet or activity level to help manage the side effects. Juggling multiple medicines can be confusing, especially if you take them at different times each day. Tell all your healthcare providers about the medicines you take. Tell your doctors about all the prescribed and OTC medicines you take, even if a different doctor prescribed it. Tell your primary doctor before you begin taking a new medicine that a different doctor prescribed. For your next appointment, put everything you take in a bag to bring along. Include other prescription medicines, over-the-counter medicines, herbal remedies and medicinal teas, supplements such as vitamins and minerals. Here are some things you can do if you have trouble taking multiple medicines. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about any potential duplications or overlapping medicines. Ask your doctor to simplify your medicines. For example, one combination medicine may take the place of two. Ask if there are medicines you don't need anymore. 
Review your medicine list each year with your doctor. Choose a family member to help you if it gets too confusing. Your plan may cover multi-dose packaging. Contact member services at the phone number on your member ID card to learn more. Some people may have trouble opening the prescription bottle. In fact, medical problems in the hands or fingers can make it hard to open bottles, use a pill splitter, or fill a syringe. Your pharmacist may be able to work with your doctor to help with non-childproof caps, tear-off daily dose pouches, pill boxes, pre-filled insulin syringes, and or insulin pens. Medicines may lose effectiveness if you don't store them correctly. Most medicines should be kept in a cool, dry area. The medicine cabinet in your bathroom is not a good place to keep medicines because of the moisture and heat from the shower. You also should not store them on a shelf of any cabinet that has under-the-cabinet lighting. The light is a source of heat which can damage medicines. The medicine label should mention if there are specific storage requirements. For example, some medicines must be kept in a refrigerator, but only if the instructions say so. Always make sure your medicines are stored safely away from young children. When you travel, be careful not to run out during your trip. If necessary, you can ask your health plan to override any restrictions so you can get your refill before you leave. Ask your doctor or pharmacist how to adjust your medicine schedule to account for changes in time, routine, and diet. Bring the phone numbers of your doctors and pharmacists with you. When flying, carry your medicines with you. Do not pack them in your checked luggage. When traveling, always keep medicines out of the heat and direct sunlight. Keep medicines in their original containers. The container includes important information about you and the medicine you take. Never put more than one kind of medicine in the same container. Mail order pharmacies can give you up to a 90 day supply of the medicines you take every day to help ensure you don't run out. Remember, it may take time for a new mail order to get started. Make sure you have a backup prescription at a retail pharmacy in case there is a delay with the mail service. Ask your doctor for two prescriptions, a 30-day supply to fill immediately at your retail pharmacy and a 90-day supply to send for ongoing home delivery. Another advantage of mail order is that you can refill it up to a month ahead where a retail pharmacy can only refill a few days to a week ahead. That may be important if you travel or otherwise need to plan ahead. Though we have a session on safety later in this course, we'll briefly discuss safety with medicines in this session. The more medicines you take, the greater the chance of having a problem. When managing your medicine, make safety a priority to avoid unwanted side effects and harmful interactions. Safety issues may increase if you are taking multiple medicines, see more than one doctor, use more than one pharmacy, take a medicine to help you with the side effects of another, take vitamins and supplements without talking to your doctor or pharmacist first. Safety issues may decrease if you keep a list of all medicines, herbals, and vitamins you take and a schedule when you take them, understand all your medicines and make sure none are expired, ask if there are medications you don't need anymore, use one pharmacy who can see all prescriptions you take, don't share your medicines and keep them out of the reach of children. You may have to stop taking your medicines just before an outpatient surgery or other procedure. In fact, you should discuss your medicines before any scheduled event. Here are some questions to ask before the day of your procedure. What medicines should I stop before my admission and when should I stop taking them? Will you prescribe any medicines at discharge? If so, can I get them filled before admission? If not, can you send the prescription to my pharmacy? What medicines can I take for pain if needed? When will I be able to resume taking my regular medicines? Who should I contact if I have any medicine-related questions? An unplanned hospital or skilled care stay may impact your medicine. There are important questions to ask when discharged. Are there any new medicines added? If so, refer to the list of new medicine questions. For each new medicine, ask, what does it do? What is the dose? When do I take my next dose after discharge? And are there any other special instructions? Do I stop taking any of my medicines at home? If so, where do I dispose of medicines I do not take anymore? Do I have the medicines that I need before I leave? If not, have the prescriptions been called to my pharmacy? Are there any drug interactions or side effects I should be aware of? We are going to review how to read a prescription label. If you have a prescription bottle with you, you can follow along to find how your pharmacy displays information on their label. 
you will also find a picture of the label in your workbook. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, regulates the information on prescription medicine labels. Every medicine label must carry the same minimum information. See if you can follow along on your bottle. The general information on a prescription medicine label includes at least the date the medicine was originally dispensed, the patient's name, the prescribing doctor's name, the prescription number, this may begin with the letters RX, the name, address, and phone number for the pharmacy that dispensed the medicine. The medical information you'll find on the label is specific to the medicine within. The name of the medicine, the brand name of the medicine if this is a generic, the visual description, what the medicine looks like including the color, size, shape, and markings of the medicine. The same medicines from different manufacturers may vary in color, size, shape, and markings. When you pick up your medicines from the pharmacy, look at your medicines. Ask questions if the color, shape, size, and markings are different than you expected. Quantity provided. For example, QTY30 means the pharmacist dispensed 30 pills. The dosage. This tells you the strength of the medicine. If it's a compound or combined medicine, it will refer to each of the active ingredients. A pill might say how many grams or milligrams, while a liquid might refer to milliliters of the active ingredients. The number of remaining refills. The expiration date. Medicines can lose their effectiveness over time, so be sure to safely discard any that are outdated. Talk to your prescribing doctor about renewing the prescription. Instructions. For example, take one tablet by mouth daily. It can also include details like whether you should take it with food or if morning or before bedtime is appropriate. Warnings. This tells you about any severe side effects or harmful reactions with certain foods and or other medications. It may also describe who should not use the medicine. These may appear on the label or as an attached sticker and may appear in all caps. For example, this medication may cause drowsiness or limit time in sunlight when taking this medication. That concludes our discussion on medicines. I hope you'll take some time to complete the medications list in your workbook. I can't stress enough how important this is. Share your list with all your doctors and healthcare providers as well as your family. And remember to keep one or two copies in your wallet or purse for emergency or urgent care needs. You might also want to explore the HealthWise knowledge base to learn more about managing medicines and strategies that best fit your lifestyle. There's a list of suggested search topics in your workbook. That concludes our discussion for today. Thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.